Hello, chemistry students. Welcome to class. We're going to be taking the balancing equations work we did last time and adding to it. Because in addition to being able to balance equations, you need to be able to classify what kind of equation it is. And so I want to introduce you to the five types of reactions that we have in chemistry class. So you're going to need some paper for making notes, and I'm going to use some color. And so I think you should have some colors too. So grab some color pencils, crayons, markers, highlighters, something like that that can give colors. I'm going to be sticking with like red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. And be sure that you are ready to pay attention by having all your electronics away. Before we get started, wanted to let you know I was talking with a friend the other day and I was like, hey, I got this extra electron I don't want. And my friend was like, man, don't be so negative. Okay. So again, there's five types of reactions and you're gonna wanna make notes over these. So our first type is called double replacement reactions. So a double replacement reaction is where two compounds make two new compounds. That's the double part of double replacement reactions. Now I'm gonna like pause a moment. I know you're trying to frantically write some stuff down, okay? So first type of reaction, now over five, is a double replacement reaction. On our test, you should be expected to be able to look at an equation and say what kind of reaction it is. So the way you would know it's a double replacement reaction is you would see two compounds as reactants making two new compounds as products. Now I wanna illustrate this with some pictures before I give you an example of what it would look like as an equation. So what I have here is I have some circles, okay? And my circles here represent two compounds. So you might grab yourself a red color and make yourself a little red circle. And this is a compound, and, and you're going to see why I have two parts in my compounds. There are compounds with more than two parts, but you'll see what I'm getting at in just a minute here. So I've got a red and blue compound made up of like a red element and a blue element going on. And I also have, so these are both reactants. I also have a yellow compound or yellow green compound. So yellow element and a green element in a compound. So here's my first compound. Here's my second compound. They are two separate reactants. I've got the plus sign in between them and I have my arrow. So I wanna show you how two compounds will make two new compounds. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna keep the beginning element where it is. I know that seems kind of odd sounding. I'm gonna keep the red one where it is and I'm gonna keep the yellow one where it is. What I mean by that is here's my red and yellow. So giving you a moment to color in a little red and yellow. Okay, now this is supposed to make new compounds. My red was with blue, my yellow was with green. So to make a new compound, I'm gonna put my red with the green and my yellow with the blue. That is the new compound that is made. So a double replacement reaction means on the reactant side, on the left side of the arrow, you have two compounds, not, not individual elements, okay, but two compounds. And on the product side, you've got two new compounds, not elements, compounds, right? So this is gonna be more than one element together. This is more than one element together. And if you will, they swap partners. Now, I trust that you would never be so mean to do like they do in the movies where, you know, you go to a party with a, a date and then while there you see a friend also has a date and you, you decide, hey, I think your date's a better fit for me and my date's a better fit for you and let's, let's swap. Okay, that, that just sounds cruel. Don't do that. Okay, leave it for the movies. Uh, but that is what's going on here. There are these negative parts of the compounds swapping locations with each other. So that's a double replacement reaction. Now I wanna show you this, we're still gonna be doing some coloring. I'm gonna start again with my reactants that I just had. So my red with my blue and my yellow with my green. And I just wanna show you 
that it could also be you leave the second part, the negative part, where it is. What I mean by that is notice how now I have my blue and my green in the same position. So if I'm not swapping my blue and my green to make my new compounds, I would need to swap my yellow and my red. So there's my two new compounds that way. Now, once you color this in, I hope you see this is this and this is this, like they are the same result. Okay, it's the exact same result. It doesn't matter what order these go in. It's like saying four plus two is the same as two plus four. Doesn't matter what order they're in. What matters is that you've got either the back parts swapped or the front parts swapped. That's what matters. All right, so what I want to show you next is an example that you would actually see. Like on the test, I'm not gonna have colored blobs, okay? On the test, I'd have compounds. So, so let's look at what would you see? What would you recognize? Because again, your assignment you're about to do is gonna be not just balancing, but you gotta decide, is this a double replacement reaction? So look at what I have. I have two compounds as reactants. Now, first off, how do I know they're compounds? Well, this is two elements put together and this is two elements put together, okay? So it's not elements, it's two compounds, okay? And they're gonna make two new compounds. And as I showed you above, there's actually two ways you could do that. I'm going to take the beginning parts. So here's my Na, here's my H. I'm taking the beginning parts and I'm leaving them where they are. So, no, sorry, I'm swapping them. I said it reverse. I'm swapping them. So see how my H went over to where my Na was and my Na is now over where my H is. And I have those charges again. Because then when I swap, I keep saying this backwards, I'm sorry, when I don't swap my second parts, the negative parts, when those stay where they are, there we go, okay. So notice I have those with their charges. I need a new crisscross to go for my new compound. So it's not difficult, but you just need to recognize that that's how we make our new compounds. We swap either the beginnings or the ends, you, you have your choice, and we do need to re-crisscross those new compounds. So sodium's a one, chlorine's a one. Okay, that's not gonna change anything. Hydrogen's a one, oxygen's a two. So I do have a two to crisscross over. All right, so I've done my crisscross there. So I hope you see two compounds to start with, two compounds to end with, that is a double replacement. The double of double replacement is two compounds. You're not swapping twice. That won't get you anywhere. Two compounds is the word double. Replacement is saying you're gonna swap the fronts or swap the backs. Okay, I'm not totally done with double replacement yet because I need to balance this equation. So let's go through and balance it. And that is something I expect you to be able to do by now because we practiced it last time and you still need to be able to balance equations. So here I have a hydrogen, here I have two hydrogens. Okay, well, let's fix that because over here, I'm going to need two. So I'm going to put a little two right there in front. Okay, so my coefficient of two gives me two hydrogens to match these two hydrogens. But now I have my two chlorines over here and I only have one chlorine over here. So I've got to fix that. So I'm going to put a two there. Well, now I have my two chlorines here to go with my two chlorines there, but I just made two sodiums and oh, and I'm, I'm okay because I already have two sodiums. The only element I haven't looked at yet is oxygen. So let's take a look at oxygen here and there's oxygen there and it's one of each. So I'm good to go there. So now my equation is balanced. So still expect you to be able to balance equations and then expect you to tell me what kind of reaction an equation shows. A double replacement reaction is two compounds as reactants making two different compounds as products. All right. Next up, second kind, single replacement reaction. So if you had to guess, if a double replacement reaction meant two compounds, what would a single replacement reaction make? So you say one compound? Okay, well, yeah, you're, you're close. 
a single replacement reaction is only one compound, but it's one compound and an element. So one compound, one element is going to make a one new compound and one new element. So notice I'm not saying the word compound twice. There, there's not two compounds on each side. That was last time. This time is compound element makes a new compound and new element. And I'm going to do some coloring again in just a moment. I'm trying to give you some time to write this in. Single replacement reactions are where one compound and then one element as reactants make one new compound and one new element as products. So one of each on each side. Okay, so coloring time again. So this time I have, uh, can you tell I have a compound and an element? So here's my compound, I have a red circle and a blue circle. Here's my element, I have a purple circle. All right, now there's actually two things that could happen at this point. And I'm not gonna expect you to know which way it's gonna be, but I want you to be able to see the two possibilities before I go to an example. It's very possible the element takes the place of the front or positive part or metal of the compound, because that's, that's what's always there, is the metal, the positive part, it's in the front. So it's possible if this purple circle represented another metal, it'd be like metal for metal replacement, okay? So if it replaces in the front of the compound, now my purple is with my blue. And when my purple joined with the blue, that meant the red is now by itself. And I really, really hope you would never do this to a date, like go take a date to a party and decide that you'd rather leave the party with someone else. I mean, that'd be super cruel. Don't do that, okay? With the elements, it actually works out okay. It deals with electronegativities and, and it just, it happens. Nature makes this happen, it, it happens. Um, the purple is a much better fit to be with the blue than the red. So the purple joins with the blue and the red is by itself. And that works out okay for the red in the long run anyway. Nature works it out, so no worries. Now, like I said at the beginning, there are two ways this could work. So again, this was the purple replacing the front or the positive piece or the metal. There, it's all the same thing going on there. So metal replacing metal. What if my purple was a non-metal? <laughs> Pardon me. What if my purple was a non-metal? Well, if my purple's a non-metal, it's gonna replace the non-metal in the compound, the negative part, the back side of the compound. So that is the purple's now going to replace the blue. And so you can see, here's the other option. Now, again, I'm not really gonna ask you to explain or per predict, there's the word. I'm not gonna ask you to predict which option is it following. I just want you to be able to identify this is a single replacement reaction. So when the purple replaces the blue, so it's now purple and red, what's left over is the blue by itself. And what this means is we have this activity series and in this activity series of elements, purple is a little more active than blue. So purple, when it, it has this opportunity to grab a hold of the red, it's going to, and the blue just kind of moves on doing its own thing because it's not as active. So two possibilities what would you see to classify this as a single replacement reaction? One element and one compound, or one compound, one element, the order doesn't matter, makes a new element and a new compound. How would this look as an actual reaction? Okay, so I've picked an actual reaction here. I have zinc and I have HCl, hydrochloric acid. And I, I like doing this. This was fun. This is a fun reaction. It, uh, you'll see why in just a minute. I hope we can do this in lab. So we're going to put some zinc in with some hydrochloric acid. The zinc is a metal and hydrogen is positive like metals are. So the zinc's going to replace the hydrogen. And so you can see I put my zinc with my chlorine and oh, look, a new compound needs a new crisscross. So I am going to end up crisscrossing the two and, and the one. Okay. Now, what also is made is some hydrogen. This is pure hydrogen gas. 
And so hopefully we get to make a little of this in lab and then we can test for it by seeing if we can set it on fire because hydrogen gas can burn quite well. So we're going to crisscross the zinc and chlorine. I need to still do that. So there's that crisscross. And this is what we would see. Notice it's an element and a compound making a new compound <laughs> and new element. All right. I'm not done yet because I'm not balanced yet. So let's go through and balance this. I see one ZN, one ZN. So far, so good. I see one H on the left here, two H's on the right. Let's fix that up. I got to put a two over here. But by putting a two there, two H's, I'm also getting two CLs going on there. Okay, so let's put a two. Oh, it's already there. So I'm good. So one ZN, one ZN, two H's, two H's, two CLs, two CLs. It's all balanced. It's all good. I'm moving on. Again, you're going to be practicing in just a little bit, balancing these and classifying them. So we had double replacement, two compounds make two compounds. We had single replacement, single element, single compound makes single element, single compound. Third kind of reaction is very different from the other two. We call it synthesis. Um, often you'll also hear referred to as a combination reaction. I actually like that name a little better, but most people say synthesis. If you synthesize something, that means you're putting it together, you're building it, okay? So we're going to synthesize something. Well, we are actually. Uh, synthesis reaction is very unique, very different from the other two, pretty easy to spot. For a synthesis reaction, you're gonna have two reactants and they're gonna make one product. Two reactants, one product. Notice how like this is unique. Double replacement, had two products. Single replacement, had two products. This has one product, very unique, one product. So I can recognize it pretty easily as a synthesis reaction if I have two reactants and it makes one product. With some colors, here's what could happen. I have an orange and I have a green. And those are my two reactants. Uh, right now they look like an element and an element and they're gonna join together and make a compound. So we really are gonna synthesize or build or make a compound out of these two elements. So synthesis reaction, okay. Another way this could look, they were not supposed to be all orange. That's a bummer. Okay, there we go. Another way this could look is I have two compounds. You see how I have two compounds here? Okay, I have two compounds. And notice the definition of synthesis. It doesn't say whether they're elements or compounds. It just says two reactants. Would you agree there's two reactants? One, two, okay. They've got to still make one and only one product. So, there we go. My product now has three circles in it because I have an orange circle, a green circle, and a red circle. And this actually happens quite often. Often like the red circles are oxygen. And so the oxygen's all just combined together. And the yellow circle is there and the blue, the green circle's there and there we go. Okay, so synthesis reactions, I hope you find them easy to spot because it's two things on the left make one thing on the right. Okay. Here's what it would look like in an actual equation. I have nitrogen, an element. I have hydrogen, an element. It actually doesn't matter that they're elements. How many of them do I have? Two reactants. Okay, so two reactants right there, and I'm gonna make one product. So there it is. Okay, so I hope you're saying, wait, this is a balance, because it's not. That's true. But again, check how I see it's a synthesis. Two reactants make one product. Clear giveaway. One product, synthesis. Now I do need to balance it. So here's two nitrogens, one nitrogen. Okay, I'm going to put a two here, two nitrogens. Oh, but when I did that, I made six. They multiply six hydrogens. So what times two makes six over here? I hope you said three. So two nitrogens, two nitrogens, six hydrogens, six hydrogens. There we go. 
Okay, so that's synthesis reaction. Three reactions down, due to go. Fourth type of reaction is decomposition reactions. And if you think about what it means to decompose, that's a very fitting name for this. In a decomposition reaction, one reactant makes two products. So our one reactant is literally gonna fall apart into two products. And that's exactly what like for something to decompose does. It goes from being like one thing to lots of little other things, okay? So decomposition reactions. And I also wanna point out how this is like the reverse of a synthesis reaction. Okay, so I have one reactant. It will have to be a compound, okay? Don't worry about that. One reactant. Here's my compound. What could this compound decompose into? Well, I have a green circle or a yellow circle, so it's probably gonna give me a green circle and a yellow circle, okay? Two products. One reactant, two products, all right. Another way this could look is one bigger reactant. So I have purple, blue, green, and it will also make two products, okay? So I'm going to have like purple with green and some blue with green. And again, typically like when this happens, green is oxygen and the oxygen just kind of gets split to both of them and everything's good. So how do you know it's a decomposition reaction? you see just one reactant, two products. Should hopefully be clear to see, and I hope you see the reverse of synthesis. Synthesis, two became one, decomposition, one becomes two. Hope you see how they're reverses. All right, let's give you an example of this. Here is carbonic acid, and carbonic acid is very famous for decomposing to make water and carbon dioxide. So this was a very large compound and now it's split into two smaller pieces and that's decomposition. That's all you need to see in order to classify it. Let's balance this. So I've got two hydrogens and I've got two hydrogens and so far so good. And I've got three, sorry, one carbon, helps if I grab the right number, one carbon there, one carbon there, that's good three oxygens here, one plus two is three oxygen. So it's already balanced. It would just, the, the coefficients are all ones. So there we go, that's what I have. All right, so that's a decomposition reaction. That's reaction type number four of the promised five types of reactions. So we're almost done. This last type of reaction is very unique from all the others. Single replacement, double replacement, kind of, sort of similar. Decomposition, synthesis, very similar, just reverses. Okay, this is very unique. I hope it makes it easy to find. Combustion of a hydrocarbon reactions. Okay, so combustion is burning. And a hydrocarbon has hydrogen and carbon. I know, shocking, right? Uh, there might be other elements, but as long as there's hydrogen and carbon, we'll be thinking it's a hydrocarbon. So combustion of a hydrocarbon reaction means I'm gonna be burning a hydrocarbon. Now here's the thing, I would have a hydrocarbon and I'm gonna burn it. For anything to burn, what gas is needed? Hope you said oxygen. Hope you know your fire triangle. Fire needs oxygen. It, it, fire doesn't exist without oxygen. If our atmosphere was pure oxygen, we would never be able to put out a single fire, ever. It, it would never go out, ever. And, and which means there would be nothing left on the earth because it would have all burnt up long ago when the first caveman lit the first fire. And, and probably not even that like soon. Like it probably was long, long ago when the first lightning strike hit something, okay? So it's a good thing our atmosphere is not pure oxygen. Combustion of a hydrocarbon is we're gonna take a hydrocarbon and oxygen and we will always make, always get water and carbon dioxide. Our hydrocarbon, whatever that might look like, and oxygen is going to make water and carbon dioxide. Okay, now, 
we just had carbonic acid that made water and carbon dioxide. Is that combustion of a hydrocarbon? No, because what you did not see was the oxygen. Okay, I want you to see how very formula-like, like it's got to match this form or it's not combustion of hydrocarbon. I need a hydrocarbon and oxygen. Those must be the reactants. If one of those two is not there, it's not this. It will make carbon dioxide and water. And if one of those two is not there, it will not be this, okay? So combustion of a hydrocarbon is a hydrocarbon and oxygen making water and carbon dioxide. Those are guaranteed reactants and guaranteed products. And that's how you would know it's this kind. I don't have any colors for this. There's like, it doesn't, make any sense to color this. We're just going to go to some examples and balance. So here's my first example. So this is propane. C3H8 is propane. This is what goes through my gas grill when I go to grill my burgers. So I got some C3H8 propane. And for that propane to burn, it must have oxygen. So that's a requirement for a combustion reaction combustion of a hydrocarbon, I'm going to have to have oxygen or can't burn. It's going to make water and carbon dioxide. And that's a requirement for a combustion of a hydrocarbon reaction. Like this is the easiest one to predict what's going to happen because you know it's a promise. Water and carbon dioxide will be made. So here's the way it's going to look. Propane and oxygen have to be reactants, hydrocarbon and oxygen, and then water and carbon dioxide have to be products. I still need to balance this. So let's take some time to balance it. Now check it out. I've got three carbons over here and one, only one carbon over there. So I got to fix that. So I'm going to fix it by putting a three there. Now the yes that changed the oxygen, I'm not going to mess with the oxygen yet. Trust me on this. Okay, now we're going to look for the hydrogen. So here's my hydrogen. I have eight hydrogens here. Over here, I have two, so I'm like, what times two would give me eight? Four, right? So I'm going to put four right there. So four times two is eight. So I have three carbons, three carbons, that's all good. I have eight hydrogens, and four times two is eight hydrogens, that's all good. Now check out my oxygen. Now this is how I'm going to do it. Okay, watch. I'm going to add up my oxygens on the product side, on the right side. So four oxygens here, plus another six, because three times two is six, six oxygens here. Four plus six, 10 oxygens. I have 10 oxygens in the product side on the left. Sorry, right, on the right, on the product side, I have 10 oxygens. So I need 10 on the left. And it's got to be something times two to make 10. So what times two will make 10? Yeah, five. Okay, so now it's balanced. Three carbons, three carbons, eight hydrogens, eight hydrogens. Four plus six is 10 oxygens and 10 oxygens. All right. Now I want to show you one more before we finish here. Okay, this is butane, you know, one of the little lighters that you know, well, clearly you don't own one because they're not allowed to for kids to have at school. And so I'm, I'm sure you don't have one. Uh, but those little handy butane lighters, you know, used for lighting stuff like birthday candles. Uh, super easy to uh, get a hold of some butane. So C4H10, that's what's in the lighter. And um, just like anything else, when it burns, I need oxygen and I'm going to get hyd uh, hydrogen. I'm going to get water and carbon dioxide. So there's our form. So I hope you see how specific this form is when it comes to identifying it. You got to have your hydrocarbon and oxygen on the reactant side on the left. You got to have your water and carbon dioxide on the right, or it's not this kind of reaction. Okay, now I need to balance it. So I got four carbons over here. So let me put a four over here to have four carbons there. Hey, okay. I'm going to leave the oxygens till later. I have 10 hydrogens over here. Okay, so let's get 10 over here. What times two is 10? Okay, five, all right. And now I do that thing I did last time where I start on, I'm gonna start on this side. Five oxygens plus another eight oxygen. So five, six, seven, eight, okay, 13. 
13 oxygens on the right. I need 13 oxygens on the left. But here's the question I have to ask. What times two makes 13? That's a tough question, isn't it? Well, I hope you say 13 halves times two makes 13, because that's exactly how that works. The, the two in the denominator, this two in the numerator would cancel, right? Now, are you like, ew, that, that's so weird to have a fraction as a coefficient? And yeah, that is weird. We don't normally do that. That's, it, it's not wrong, but we don't normally do that. So let's not do that. How can I get rid of this fraction of 13 halves? Well, it's actually pretty easy. I'm going to multiply everything by 2. So this, in the very beginning, I have a 1 there. It's going to be multiplied by 2. This 13 halves is going to be multiplied by 2. This 5 is going to be multiplied by 2. This 4 is going to be multiplied by 2. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to multiply everything by 2. What that means I'm going to be left with is 2 butanes, 13 oxygens, 10 waters, and 8 carbon dioxides. And that's our little trick for getting rid of that fraction there. Now, you would only ever have a half here, you know, 13 halves, 15 halves, something like that. So you would only ever need to multiply by 2, but this does not happen all the time. Please let me point out how up here it didn't happen. I didn't need this little thing to multiply by two to get rid of the fraction. Down here I did. You just have to figure out what that equation is doing and, and what number goes there. And that's why I started with the amount of oxygens on the product side on the right. And I used that to tell me how many oxygens were on the left. Okay, so that's our five types of reactions. We've got double replacement, single replacement, uh, synthesis, decomposition, and combustion of a hydrocarbon. Now, how are you going to use that? Well, let's talk about the assignment you're about to do. So listen up, because in just a minute, this paper is going to get passed to you, and then you're going to do it. So we've got, uh, here, here's a picture of the assignment. We've got a reaction. And the first thing you need to do is you need to balance the reaction. So take the time to go through and put numbers in the blanks to think of balance. Remember, if it's a one, you don't need to write ones. You can if you want to. I, I understand if you leave it blank, it's a one. So I have two H's and two H's, and I check my S's and see do I have one S and one S? I do in four O's, and three plus one is four. So there we go. It is actually all balanced. Every time now on this assignment, after you balance, you're going to see two blanks. And you need to fill in two blanks, but I'm giving you a word box, if you will, a phrase box, maybe, for both blanks. In the first blank, so you see first blank here, first blank here, you're going to, in the first blank, these are the only choices of words you can correctly put in. You got to pick the correct one out of there. If you make up something else to put in there, you are definitely wrong from the beginning. You're either writing in the words double replacement, single replacement, synthesis, decomposition, or combustion of a hydrocarbon in that first blank. Those are the only choices you have available. So I look at what I got. I have one reactant. I have two products. Oh, that narrows it down. OK, so I would pick from this bank here what to write right there. OK, then I'm going to pick from this bank what goes in the second blank. And, and if it's you know really long, you just write small. Squeeze it in. OK. Why is this what I think it is? Well, I think it is a decomposition. So I would write decomposition in the first blank. And then why, what made me think it was a decomposition? Well, I, if you just go through your blank and go through the notes, keep your notes out. OK, what's, what's a key clue of decomposition? One reactant made two products. So I would write that here in the second blank. So again, these five are the only choices for the first blank after every balanced equation. These choices are the only five good choices for the second blank. Don't make up your own thing. You got to be copying one of these five. So I only put them once at the top of your page because you're going to be using the same five every time for the first blank and the same five every time for the second blank. 
don't get creative it's one of those okay so that's your assignment you're going to balance and then you're going to classify and explain why you picked your classification and, and this should go hand in hand together and it should match what you have now in your notes that you made with the pretty colored circles and everything so with those notes out and practicing your balancing you should be able to classify with very little difficulty all right that is how you will complete the assignment the rest of the period is to be spent working on that assignment it is due i'm going to strongly suggest even though it is due like at the end of today i don't really want you turning it in please hold on to it till i return okay uh, but this is an assignment you do want to do it today get it done today because next time we're going to do something else so be sure you take care of it and get it done good luck